President Trump. President Trump. President Trump. President Trump. President Trump. Will President Donald Trump ever release his tax returns? This burning question dates back before Donald Trump officially announced he was running for the highest office in the country. Democrats ratcheted up their investigations into President Trump. Donald Trump has finally been cornered on his tax returns. I'm not continuing to go down this uh, a, a, again of you asking me 20 questions on this. More than two years into his presidency, and he still hasn't released them. Trump said on The Hugh Hewitt Show, on the day you declare, how many years of tax returns will you release? Well, I'd certainly go over tax returns. It's not illegal for presidents to withhold their tax returns, and there's nothing requiring them to make the returns public. The IRS is obligated to release tax returns if it's subpoenaed by Congress. And now, this whole issue is coming to a head. The Democratic-Controlled Ways and Means Committee has subpoenaed the Treasury Secretary and IRS Commissioner to release six years of Trump's personal and business tax returns. The committee has a right to request financial documents of an individual for policymaking purposes. The rationale? Chairman Richard Neal says he wants to review the extent to which the IRS audits and enforces the federal tax laws against a sitting president. But so far, the Treasury Department has refused to turn over Trump's tax returns. We will follow the law, but this is a very important issue. We want to make sure that we follow the law properly. While presidents unveiling their tax returns is not baked into law, just like delivering the State of the Union speech, it has become a tradition. Richard Nixon started the tradition of presidents releasing their tax returns in the 1970s. As the House was starting to think about impeachment during the Watergate scandal, journalists discovered Richard Nixon took out large deductions on his tax returns, and in an effort to defend himself, he released his documents. That I welcome this kind of examination, because people have got to know whether or not their president is a crook. Well, I'm not a crook. He launched Executive Order 11786. This authorized his federal income tax returns to be released to the House Judiciary Committee. Nixon was eventually exonerated of committing income tax fraud by a 26 to 12 vote, but it didn't work out for him in the end. I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. Over the last 40 years, every presidential candidate from a major party has released their tax returns, except for Donald Trump. Despite not releasing his own tax returns, Trump hasn't shied away from calling out other Republicans for not submitting their finances in past elections. 2012, Donald Trump called out the then-presidential candidate, Mitt Romney, for not disclosing his tax returns. He told Fox News, I mean, Mitt has to get those tax returns out. I'm a little bit surprised that, you know, they weren't better prepared for that, but mm -hmm. I assume everything's fine with the taxes. Romney did eventually release his tax returns. Three years later, on The Hugh Hewitt Show, Donald Trump hinted that he would turn over his tax returns. On the day you declare, how many years of tax returns will you release? Well, I'd certainly go over tax returns. And I, I will tell you, nobody knows the tax return business or world better than me. And then Trump did what he had been teasing for decades. He announced his candidacy for the president of the United States. And we are going to make our country great again. But the question of his tax returns tainted his campaign. In an ABC interview with George Stephanopoulos, he tiptoed around the topic. Getting any closer to releasing your tax returns? Well, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about maybe when we find out the true story on Hillary's uh, emails. You know, I've been saying that for a while. Let's find you know, out the true story. But, but you know what? And I, I, I'm very honest on my tax returns. What is your tax rate? I'm not going to say it, but at some point I'll release it. He still hasn't. Trump took to Twitter to update his followers on the state of his taxes, tweeting, just for your info, tax returns have zero to do with someone's net worth. I've already filed my financial statements with the FEC. They are great. Even members of the GOP called on Donald Trump to release his tax returns. Mitt Romney spoke to Fox. You know, frankly, I think we have good reason to believe that there's a bombshell in Donald Trump's taxes. Following Romney's interview with Fox News, the then presidential candidate, Senator Ted Cruz, followed up with his own message for Donald Trump. As Mitt Romney observed, the fact that Donald seems terrified to release his taxes suggests that there's a bombshell there. Why not release the tax returns that aren't involved in the audit? 
because it's a link. Uh, I have very big tax returns. I'm sure you've seen the picture where the returns are yeah. literally from the floor to up to here. Will They're you, extremely complex. Do you think you I get can audited. do it before the election, though? I hope so. I'd like to. I have no problem with Do you with pledge to do it before returns. the election? Excuse me. Sure. If, if, if the audit is finished, I'll do it as fast as the audit's finished. But that argument is flawed. If anybody's tax return is under audit, is there a rule that would prohibit that taxpayer from releasing it? I think I've answered that question, no. During the first presidential debate, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump squared off over his tax returns and her email controversy. I will release my tax returns against my lawyer's wishes when she releases her 33,000 emails that have been deleted. Then the next month, the New York Times released a story saying 1995 tax records show that Trump may have avoided paying anything in income taxes for nearly two decades. That year, Trump reported a $916 million loss. Trump was able to use that almost billion dollar loss to cancel out future income taxes of equivalent amounts. During the second debate, Donald Trump was pressed in the New York Times report. Did you use that $916 million loss to avoid paying personal federal income taxes? For of years? course I do. Of course I do. And so do all of her donors, or most of her donors. I know many of her donors. That I will totally accept the results of this great and historic presidential election if I win. President Trump? Maybe something that everybody needs to get used to, including the Republican Party. Despite not releasing his tax returns to the public like so many candidates before him, Donald Trump was elected president of the United States. It's time for us to come together as one united people. It's time. But the controversy surrounding his taxes continued. Just days before Trump was inaugurated, he continued to tiptoe around the topic, saying Americans don't care at all about his tax returns. Is you know, the only one that cares here? about my tax returns are the reporters, okay? You They're the only the ones. The American public is concerned but, but, No, I don't think so. I, I won. Do you believe I mean, I became president. No, I don't think they care at all. But why are Americans so fixated on Trump's tax returns? Trump claimed he took in hundreds of millions in revenue in 2017 from his hotels, clubs, golf courses, and merchandise. No president has been paid that much money from outside businesses. Other presidents, such as Ronald Reagan and George Bush, put their assets into blind trusts to avoid any conflicts of interest. In January of 2017, Trump handed over control of his empire to his sons, Donald Jr. and Eric. My two sons are going to be running the company. But the profits still flow to President Trump. Critics of the president, including ethics experts, want to see for themselves exactly how much he's making, where it's coming from, and if he's paying the appropriate taxes. Former director of the United States Office of Government Ethics, Walter Schaub, has been a critic of Trump from the start. Now, some have said that the president can't have a conflict of interest, but that's quite obviously not true. The scramble to find Trump's taxes continued. On Twitter, MSNBC's Rachel Maddow touted that she had Trump's tax returns. But it turned out to be his tax returns from 11 years before. What I have here uh, is a copy of Donald Trump's tax returns. We have his federal tax return for one year, for 2005. The returns show that Donald Trump reportedly took in $152 million in income. The White House came out and said that number was calculated after taking depreciation into account. The paperwork showed that Trump had a write-down of $103.2 million, and Trump paid around $38 million, the alternative minimum tax. Some even thought it was a political win for Trump. You know, everyone was saying he never paid any taxes. Everyone was saying that he, he, didn't, he didn't make the money that he reputed to make. I, I think it was a win for the White House, obviously. And then in October of 2018, Another bombshell New York Times report revealed that Donald Trump received around $400 million in today's dollars from his father, Fred. A lot of that money came through sidestepping taxes in the 1990s. Why is it important? This goes against Donald Trump's claim that he's a self-made billionaire who had barely any financial help from his father. Overall, Fred Sr. and Mary Trump gave their children over $1 billion. According to the report, 
Since that amount of money fell under the 55% tax bracket on gifts and inheritance, the Trumps should have paid $550 million. They only ended up paying 5% or $52.2 million. A lawyer for Trump defended the president in the report telling the paper, the New York Times allegations of fraud and tax evasion are 100% false and highly defamatory. However, no defamation suit has been brought against the New York Times for their story. And more recently, the New York Times got their hands on printouts of Trump's official IRS tax transcripts from 1985 to 1994. The newspaper broke the story reporting Trump lost more than $1 billion over those years, more than nearly any other American taxpayer. To defend himself, Trump tweeted, Real estate developers in the 1980s and 1990s, more than 30 years ago, were entitled to massive write-offs. He went on to say, You always want to show losses for tax purposes. Almost all real estate developers did, and often renegotiate with banks. It was sport. After Democrats took the majority of the House back in midterm elections, they opened up a potential route for getting hold of Trump's taxes. The chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, Richard E. Neal, sent a letter to the IRS Commissioner, Charles Reddig, formally requesting Trump's personal and business tax returns. He did this under a fairly obscure part of the tax code, Section 6103F which says that, upon request, any individual tax return shall be furnished to the committee in a closed executive session. However, the committee could potentially vote to make them public. Representative Neal gave the IRS until April 10th to comply. But the president doesn't seem too phased by this inquest into his tax returns, saying if Robert Mueller didn't find anything in his nearly 400-page report, then there's nothing to find. Mueller, I assume, for $35 million to check to my taxes, I say it's enough. As of the beginning of May 2019, it's unclear if Mueller looked into Trump's taxes. Despite Trump's talk, it seems like he is making every effort to keep his finances private. He hired a law firm to help him fight the Democrats. Acting Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney told Fox News, You believe Democrats will never see the president's tax returns? Oh, no, never. No, nor should they. Also, Trump, his three children, and the Trump Organization are all suing Deutsche Bank and Capital One in an effort to block the banks from adhering to other congressional subpoenas. After missing multiple deadlines, Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin said in early May that he will not release Trump's tax returns to Congress. In response, Representative Neal subpoenaed the Treasury Secretary and IRS Commissioner. This could end up going all the way to the Supreme Court as a separation of powers escalates this years-long battle over Trump's taxes.